Uh, my name is Tom Graham. I'm a producer, sound producer, and uh, I've uh, <clears throat> basically interested uh, more in world music now, so uh, recording in different countries. Recently, uh, I've been going back and forth between Ecuador, which has got some very, very uh, good musicians, a rich culture, different cultures. Um, most people know pan flutes. Uh, it's but the, the, the country and the cultures are more than pan flutes, and uh, so that's what I've been doing over the last few years. World music is, uh, I mean, to me, it's anything but North American and European music, you know. Um, uh, mostly indigenous, I would say. Um, it, it's such a loose term, it's such a generalized term. It can mean many things, but... Uh, um, for me, it's more indigenous music, uh, real music from real people playing real instruments, you know. So what I do, uh, what I do uh, when I go down there is I have basically my recording studio and a couple of suitcases, uh, digital 24 track, all self-contained, effects, everything. And uh, I might take down uh, an array of microphones, not, not too many, because it's, you know, um, it, it's kind of heavy to lug around. and. Uh, any extra peripherals I need down there, I'll, I'll get cables and, you know, different things like that. And um, so I go into, um, for instance, uh, in Ecuador, there's, there's three regions. There's the Amazon part, and then you go up to the central plateau, and then you go down to the Pacific coast. And um, so I was into the Amazon. I have a project going there, which we just finished off. Uh, and... Um, the Central Plateau, I have a number of projects going there. Um, that's where more you get into the pan flutes and the mm -hmm. charangos and the things like that. How do you find these people? Well, um, I went down there. I, I always loved the music, you know, or, or I've been listening to the music recent, uh, in, the, in the last few years. And I was looking for any excuse to go down there. And, and finally, I just went down there for two weeks. And um, I did a, sh a short self produce project for uh, CBC Radio in Canada and uh, it was about a 10 minute piece and I, I just produced it and, and and they liked it so they you know it, it, it was broadcast uh, on the network and on the internet and worldwide basically just like that it was great so uh, I made some connections with a person who's connected to all of the in indigenous most of the indigenous communities and his goal is really to promote them and to raise their profile and their, their level, you know, within the country and, and without. So it was just a natural connection. And uh, so I'm able to do the recording of the music and this kind of thing. I was like a missing link, you know. So uh, I've just going back and forth a couple of times a year and I have projects on the go all the time, so... You know, basically, I I come down and my partner he 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 gets he you know arranges everything, and I show up and we set up and uh, you know he's done a bit of pre-production with them most of the time, and um, I just said I listen to what they're doing and then say okay now we're going to do it this way we set the mics here over here and uh, and uh, basically we roll and. Uh, you know, I give them I give them some direction, and uh, as we move along, um, you know, the production. Uh, the people that I've worked with are really open and very beautiful people, and uh, no no ego problems or anything at all. You know, and um, I think it's your attitude too. You know, it's, as a producer, you're the psychologist, you're the technician. Also, you're you have to keep all this in mind to bring out mm -hmm. the best you have to make the people comfortable and but it, it's not a difficult job you know uh, down there anyway so i started off i've lived in toronto most of my life <clears throat> and uh during the 60s um um i was uh i played in a lot of different uh electric electric groups uh, mostly r and b and pop you know, and uh, in the 60s, um, I had a group in Toronto called the Big Town Boys. We had a TV show, a network TV show eventually, and, you know, we made records, and it was more of a local thing.
or a Canadian local thing. And um, after that, um, after that, I, I, I actually lived in India for a couple of years. Mm. It was late 60s, and uh, which was quite an experience, and um, and, and that was. Uh, really broadened my musical uh, horizon, as it were, you know, and really got me thinking and into uh, different kind of music. Because when we're, when we grew up in North America, I mean, especially back then, I mean, you only know the music you hear on the radio, you know, and uh, it's a pretty narrow perspective when you think of all the music around the world that's going on, you know. And, uh, and so anyway, that, uh, really got me more into that kind of music and I mean since then I've just been listening and and trying to experience you know music from different cultures and and this kind of thing so I, I just did a project actually in southern Colombia which is just across the border from Ecuador with some incredible musicians really really good it's uh, I don't know I would call it modern Andean kind of music it's some of it borders on jazz you know pan flutes charangos these guys are really good, and uh, <clears throat> so I I, um, I just recorded them in uh, February, actually. And I'm uh, actually before I came to this very interview, I was mixing uh, the project, yeah, or part of the project, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm I'm there's a, a much more to do in uh, Ecuador for me, and uh, and uh, yeah. the, the music down there is so rich, Ecuador, Peru. Chile, there's some incredible groups in Chile. I mean, really, really, really good. And um, so I, I, you know, I've got a lot of work to do there, which uh, I love the music, it's just great. I think that, um, I think being a musician is really good. If you can be a producer, being a musician is really good because you understand how to work with the musicians. You understand the music, what the musicians go through, what they want, what they need. Um, the availability of digital technology recording systems, which is really fantastic, is really good, but it's a double-edged sword because not everybody is a technician. Not everybody is an engineer. So that's what you really have to learn. You know, a lot of it's trial and error, I'd say. But, uh, I mean, if you can... Really, you learn from somebody else. I think that's the easiest way. So if you can get a, a job helping somebody, you know, in a studio or just uh, with equipment who's recording people, you know, who knows a little about what he's doing, I think that's, bas uh, that's basically the best thing, you know. And you learn like that and, and you ask questions and by experience you learn. So I think that's a good way to do it.